Now we're going to turn to the calculus of natural logarithms, starting with the graph of the function. So what we already know from the definition is that it's defined only for positive x, so in particular the domain is the positive reals, 0 to infinity, and applying the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, as we have already observed, the derivative of the function is 1 over x for x positive, so that's of course something positive, and if the derivative of the function is positive on the domain, on the interval 0 infinity, then the function, the natural log function, is increasing on its domain. We've also observed that um, the natural log takes a value 0 at 1. In other words, the graph is going to go through the point of coordinates 1, 0. On the other hand, if I consider the second derivative of the function, that's the derivative of 1 over x, which I can write x to the negative 1, so I get negative x to the negative 2. In other words, negative 1 over x squared. x squared is positive, therefore this is always negative. That means that if the second derivative is negative on the interval 0 infinity, the graph of the function is going to be concave down. So that gives us already a number of elements uh, concerning the graph of the function and the only additional thing that we may want to know is the end behavior. In other words, what is the limit of ln of x when x is going to positive infinity and the limit of ln of x when x is approaching 0 from the right. It has to be from the right because of course the domain is only the positive reals. So to answer these questions, it's not very odd. We have observed in the previous video that when you have the log of a power, you can pull out the power as a multiplicative constant. So in particular, natural log of 2 to the n is n natural log of 2. Natural log of 2 is a positive number. And so when we multiply by n and n grows without bounds, then the result grows without bounds. In other words, the limit of ln of 2 to the n when n goes to infinity is infinity and so the limit as x goes to infinity of ln of x is positive infinity. Similarly, if we are trying to look at the behavior near zero for positive values of x, we can look at the limit of the sequence ln of 1 over 2 to the n and write that ln of 2 to the negative n. Again, we can pull out the power and this is negative n times ln of 2. ln of 2 is a positive number. n grows without bounds, so when n grows, this goes to negative infinity. And when n grows, 1 over 2 to the n approaches 0 from the right. Therefore, the limit at 0 from the right of ln of x is negative infinity. So here is what that means for the graph. It is an increasing function that is concave down with a limit of negative infinity at 0 from the right, in other words x equals 0 is going to be a vertical asymptote, and going to infinity when x goes to infinity. And it goes through the point of coordinate 1, 0. Now of course this function is differentiable in its domain, it's in particular continuous, and it has a limit negative infinity near 0 and positive infinity and infinity, so its range is all the reals, in particular it's going to take the value 1. In other words, the graph of the function intersects the horizontal line y equal 1, and the point of intersection has a first coordinate that we're going to denote by e and call the Euler number, and that's approximately 2.71. The status of this number is very similar to the status of pi, so it's a so-called transcendental number, um, so the sequence of decimals is something that we cannot predict. Nevertheless, um, this is a number that is going to uh, come up again, just like pi, it comes up in many, many situations. And so here, there's only one number that satisfies this property that ln of that number is 1, and this number e is what we will call the other number, so e by definition satisfy ln of e equal 1. Now going back to 
calculus type of questions. Uh, we want to look at differentiation and integration for functions that uh, involve natural log when we're talking about differentiation. And for integration, uh, we'll see how we can use the natural log to fill the gap that we had before. So we know that the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x for x positive. And if we apply the chain rule and take ln of some function u, where u is a function of x, when we differentiate with respect to x, it's like differentiating with respect to u, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of u with respect to x. Since the derivative of ln of u with respect to u is 1 over u, what we obtain is u prime over u, where u prime is the derivative of u with respect to x. Writing that in a more standard form, maybe, uh, if I have a function f of x that I plug inside the natural log and I differentiate the result, what we obtain is f prime over f. Now let's apply that to a few examples. Starting with a function uh, ln of x squared plus 10 that we want to differentiate. It's something of the form ln of u, where u is x squared plus 10. So we obtain, as we have explained, u prime over u, in other words, derivative of x squared plus 10, that's 2x, divided by the function u, x squared plus 10. So we obtain 2x over x squared plus 10. The second function is not quite of the same form. Uh, it's cosine of ln of x, so it is. it can be seen as cosine of u, where u is a function of x, and specifically where u is ln of x. Again, we can apply the chain rule to the effect that f prime is a uh, derivative of cosine u with respect to u multiply by the derivative of u with respect to x. Of course the derivative of cosine u with respect to u is negative sine u and so we obtain negative sine u times derivative of u the derivative of u is the derivative of ln of x, it's 1 over x and we can replace u by its value which is ln of x so we obtain negative 1 over x sine of ln of x. Moving on to the third example, we're looking for the derivative of the function ln of 3 fifths root of x. We could apply the formula for the uh, log of a function, different derivative of the log of a function, but here I want to observe that sometimes it is easier to simplify first. Yeah, I'm not differentiating at all, but I'm observing that ln of 3 times the fifth root of x is ln of 3 plus ln of the fifth root of x and ln of the fifth root of x is ln of x to the one fifth so we can pull out the power in other words f of x can be rewritten ln of 3 plus one fifth ln of x now this is much easier to differentiate it's just another way to write the same function because now the derivative of ln of 3 is 0 because ln of 3 is a constant and then we just get one fifth derivative of ln of x derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, so we get 4f prime 1 over 5x. Now we want to differentiate ln of absolute value of x. Recall that absolute value of x is just x if x is positive and negative x if x is negative. And it could be both if x is 0, but in that case x cannot be 0. The domain of the function f is all x except 0 because we cannot plug 0 in the natural log. In the natural log, we can only plug positive numbers, but the absolute value takes care of that. So we're going to distinguish these two cases, if x is positive and if x is negative. When x is positive, absolute value of x can be replaced by x, and so f prime is just 1 over x. If x is negative, absolute value of x can be replaced by negative x, and then we can apply the formula for the derivative of the log of the function, and we get 1 over the function multiplied by the derivative of the function. The function here is negative x, so the derivative is negative 1. So we end up with negative 1 over negative x. The negative sign cancels out and we get 1 over x again. In other words, the derivative of natural log of absolute value of x is also 1 over x, but this time this is valid for every x but, but 0. Now, this formula can be turned around and interpreted in terms of integrals and it states that an antiderivative of 1 over x is given by natural log of absolute value of x 
plus C. Of course, we could say that we already had an antiderivative by taking just ln of x. But that was valid only on the positive reals where ln of x is defined. Here, this is a formula that applies either on the positive reals or on the negative real. Of course, it doesn't mean that it applies on the entire real line because it can only apply on an interval where the function that we integrate is continuous and uh, here we have a problem at x equals 0. Continuing with applications of these formulas, let's say we want to find an equation of the tangent line to the graph y equal natural log of x cubed minus 7 at the point x equal 2. So that's going to be, by definition of the tangent line, the line through the point on the graph corresponding to x equal 2. So it has first coordinate x equal 2, second coordinate the value of y when I plug x equal 2, in this case log of 8 minus 7, so that's log of 1, and we've seen that natural log of 1 is 0. So it's a line through 2, 0, and the slope is going to be dy over dx when x is 2. So we need to calculate dy over dx. And to do that, we use the chain rule. It's dy over du times du over dx for u, which is x cubed minus 7, since y is log of u, where u is x cubed minus 7. So in this case, dy over du, the derivative of ln of u with respect to u, is just 1 over u, in other words, 1 over x cubed minus 7. And the derivative of u is the derivative of x cubed, so that's 3x squared. When x is 2, we get 12 at the top and 1 at the bottom. Therefore, dy over dx for x equal 2 is 12. And that's the slope of the tangent line. So now the tangent line is the line through the point of coordinates 2, 0 and of slope 12. In other words, it has equation y equal 12 multiplied by x minus 2.